much. I would like to uh, begin my talk with thanking the organizers for giving me an opportunity of this talk. So I would like to uh, present some progress in our work on micromagnet techniques for implementing the spin qubits and the two qubit gates uh, with the double quantum dots. So we have uh, been working on this uh, uh, spin qubit business with quantum dots uh, following the scheme of uh, Daniel Ross and David uh, DiVincenzo uh, proposed uh, in more than 10 years ago. Uh, this is the, the paper. And the universal sets of uh, quantum gates will be given by making a so-called XOR gates or uh, control not gate. The uh, this is a bit funny uh, features, but this is all included in this scheme. What we need is the rotation of the individual spins and control the exchange coupling between the two spins. And now, uh, just or somewhat the following the scheme, uh, our tentative target is to prepare a single spin rotation to form a superposition, a superposed case of two spins, up and down spin states, and also the control the correlation between two spins or uh, exchange interactions between two spins. And then, first, uh, we make a quantum dot holding just one electron, and then manipulate the spin rotation using an electron spin resonance technique. And then increase the number of uh, uh, quantum dots, in this case, in a row, and operate the, each spin using an ESR technique independently, and at the same time uh, control the exchange interaction between the two neighboring dots. In the moment, uh, there are a couple of uh, groups who have, which have uh, demonstrated the uh, single qubit operations. The scheme is quite simple if you are familiar with the electron spin resonance. The, let's have a one electron spin in two Zeeman states in the quantum dot. And the ESR will be implemented just by applying a DC magnetic field with an AC magnetic field perpendicular to this DC magnetic field. When this is uh, AC frequency is equivalent to the Zema splitting, the ESR occurs, which flips the electron spin between up and down states. And due to the Lama precessions, the spin vector will follow the surface on the surface of a uh, block sphere. And another approach is to use a uh, two spins in two quantum plots. Then, just by uh, manipulating the exchange coupling between two spins, the superposition of the up-down and down-up states will give a basis for a spin qubit. And then, they are coupled to this exchange coupling, which is implemented by Harvard group to make a uh, spin qubit. And the more recent approach is to use the uh, difference of the uh, fluctuating Zeeman, a nuclear field between two dots. So this fluctuation along the axis can couple between the spin singlet state and spin triplet state with total spin of zero uh, with, for a double dot with one electron in each. So then this fluctuating a nuclear field along Z direction can couple these two states to form a superposition states. This is also a demonstrated very recently by a Harvard group. And then the key elements to control these uh, uh, spin qubit systems is a uh, pulsed operation of a AC magnetic field for this uh, one electron spin qubit, 
and control of the J and control of the uh, fluctuating nuclear field are all the key parameters. Now, in this talk, I'll focus on this uh, the easiest case, uh, controlling the uh, uh, AC magnetic field time sequence. So then, the Hamiltonian of this single spin qubit is simply given by this uh, simple equation, having a T component of Pauli matrix to form a two uh, Zeeman subsets, and the another X component of a Pauli matrix to mix up the spin up and down steps. And then a uh, spin vector will move around the block sphere. Ever to address the just one electron spin in quantum dots, you cannot simply apply the, the standard electron spin resonance technique. The, you have to prepare a AC magnetic field very much localized to just one electron spin in a quantum dots. So this AC field cannot be global. DC field can be global. Now, the next step is how to make a local AC magnetic field. There are already a couple of uh, demonstrations. The straightforward approach is to make a very tiny coil on top of a uh, quantum dot holding just one electron. And then inject an AC current to induce a AC magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the quantum dot. This is uh, well demonstrated by Delta. And the other idea <coughs> is to use a spin orbit coupling, which is just the, uh, discussed nicely by Professor Nita. Just by applying the AC electric field to the dot, this AC electric field is converted to the uh, local magnetic field through spin orbit interactions. And then spin orbit interaction makes a local uh, magnetic field. So about this local magnetic field, you can create AC magnetic field uh, by converting from the AC electric field. And our proposal is to use a micromagnet placed on top of a quantum dot. And this micromagnet generates a stray field when it's magnetized uh, in plane in this case. At the position of a, a quantum dot, the stray field can give a, this kind of a field gradient with zero magnetic field in the center, and the higher magnetic field in the positive direction to the right, and the, the opposite uh, magnetic field to the left. And then, if you can swing your electron here and there, this electron field is uh, effectively alternating magnetic field. Then you can prepare a local AC magnetic field. And we have nicely demonstrated this operation very recently. So here, we extend this technique to make a multiple qubits. In this case, we just demonstrated two spin qubits with a double quantum dot. And then further extend the technique to operate the universal quantum gates. We have not just succeeded, but we have already succeeded in operating the swap and the square swap, uh, root swap gates, together with the spin rotation as a necessary step for making universal gates. And then we also discussed the uh, the phasing of the coherence problem measured for these uh, spin qubits. Uh, here is a list of my collaborators at our university, and I call the belonging to the Japan Science and Technology. We have just finished the, the project, and the DIT, Professor Tanyama. And the, among these uh, collaborators, the, uh, Yasuhiro Togura, NTT. Ayun Sokshin, Aro, and Bruna are their own major contributors. Uh, so then I will uh, start with the very easy part. Now I put the micromagnet on top of the quantum dot. This generates uh, two kinds of uh, stray fields. One is the, uh, the field gradient, perpendicularly oriented with the uh, slope of the about Tesla per micron. The other component is the in-plane. This is a, a statically uh, fairly uniform magnetic field. And then 
we apply the AC um, electric field by irradiating microwave to the dots and then swing electron here and there to let this electron feel this field gradient. Here is a, our device scheme. We define a quantum dot in a two-dimensional electron gas by the short key gates in yellow. And on top, we put the cobalt micromagnet, and which is magnetized in plane by application of the external magnetic field. And we place a, some a, uh, a gate to which we apply the microwave. And this is a top view. And the cobalt is usually placed on top of this quantum dot. And, but the, if we put this cobalt, you cannot see anything at all. This is intentionally displaced. And just by adjusting the old gates, we make a, a double bottom dot in the plane of two dimensional electric gaps. And then we can uh, initially measure the so called the stability diagram for charge phase <coughs> and double dot systems. Here is a, uh, the measured results. You see a series of the number of the uh, hexagons. In each hexagon, the bracket indicates the number of electrons in two dots. So this area, the both dots are empty. Here, the left dot has just one electron. The right dot has just one electron. And here, each dot has just one electron. And then we move on to this region near the boundary between 1, 1, and 2, 0 states. At near these two zero states, we can expect the so-called effect of a power spin locator. When the spin triplet is formed having power spins in two quantum dots, the transition of electron from the left to the right is blocked due to power exclusion, even when this transition is energetically allowed. Using this effect, we can uh, derive the uh, spin information. Here, I will first explain you how to read out the spin qubit information. Let's start with this uh, Pauli spin blockade condition. And we try to do a spin rotation in one of the two spins. And the fraction just rotated uh, due to the electron spin resonance effect can move from the left to the right because Pauli spin blockade is partially lifted. And then this move will cause the change of the charge states from 1, 1 to 0, 2, and this will be detected. So you can expect the uh, nice uh, electron spin resonance signal. And after the pump and the probe measurements, you can get the uh, so called the radio oscillation showing the spin flip between the spin down and up states. Now let's move on to how to implement the two spin qubits or multiple qubits. The idea is quite simple. We now make the DC magnetic field local as well. Then the local magnetic field can be different from dot to dots. And this means the electron spin resonance frequency must be different from dot to dot. So then two spins can be distinguished, or not only too many spins can be distinguished. Okay, how to do that? In the previous uh, slide, I explained that the uh, stray magnetic field can prepare two components of the uh, uh, magnetic field at the position of the quantum dots. One is the field gradient, the other is the in-plane field component. The in-plane field component is different from dot to dot if we change the configuration of the micromagnets. In this case, just by making a pair of micromagnets to make a field gradient. If we change the distance between the two magnets in a pair, the in-plane magnetic field can be different from dot to dot. So this gives uh, some contribution which is added up to the externally applied magnetic field. Just by small change of this uh, uh, stray field component in plane, the overall total uh, effective magnetic field applied to each dot is different. 
So then we can distinguish the uh, electron resonance conditions. We can expect the two resonance lines for ESR in this case. Here is the experimental data. We actually see the two resonance lines. And the, uh, by making a uh, pump and oh no, a pump and probe experiments for two dots at this resonance and also at this resonance, we can obtain the two kinds of the Rabin oscillations indicating the two spins are independently operated as qubits. Okay, this is the uh, series of Rabin oscillations obtained for the left spin at different the microwave frequencies. The, actually, the amplitude of microwave is proportional to the uh, amplitude of the uh, oscillation, spatial oscillation of the electron. So this determines the amplitude of AC magnetic field. And as we expected, the radio frequency is proportional to the square root of the microwave power, which is proportional to the uh, amplitude of microwave for the left dot. And this is the case for the uh, right spin, which is also frequency is also radio frequency is also proportional to the square root of the uh, microwave power. So here is the plot of the uh, two spins left spin and right spin on the same figure. Okay, now the, if we extend this uh, split type micromagnet technique of making multiple qubits which is implemented just by making a multiple quantum dots aligned in a row. Uh, we expect that we can obtain the more than 25 qubits without any, in principle, without any technical difficulty, <laughs> in principle. Okay, we have not yet done it. Now I move on to my next topic. Uh, for implementing a swap and square swap. So then, this is the uh, quantum circuit the, uh, scheme we fall to plan to make a, a control knob gate, which is proposed by Zach and his co-workers in two years ago. This uh, uh, quantum circuit consists of a swap and the square of the swap, and the half pi rotation of one of the two spins. The, to operate just one spin for spin rotation is somewhat easier than to operate two spins independently as, as far as electric circuit is concerned. So initial proposal by uh, Daniel Lewis and David Chenzo is to use a two spin qubit operation, two spin rotations. Uh, in the present case, we just use it, uh, one spin rotation. And in combination with the swap, this can effectively uh, rotate the other spin. So then, uh, the main part of this circuit is uh, equivalent to the uh, so-called the C phase, control phase gate. And combined with the Hadamard for one of the two qubits, the control node gates are we have already done this single spin rotation. What we need is a square root swap and a swap. That's why we try to work on this swap and square root swap gates. But combined with the spin rotation, the scheme what we did is shown here. We rotate half pi by half pi of this left spin here are making a Hadamard gate, and then swap the two spins. So then this uh, superposition state and this up spin states are swapped. And what we need in this operation is to exactly uh, control the exchange coupling. And we like have to switch on and off this exchange coupling. Just uh, when the, uh, uh, the exchange coupling times the operation time is equivalent to h over pi, swap gate is complete. If this is half pi, square root swap is complete. And there are a couple of ways to control this exchange coupling. 
The one way is to tune the interval of tonal coupling T here to tune the exchange coupling. And the other way is to tune the interval level offset if we make asymmetric the two dots. But depending on this uh, degree of uh, asymmetry, the exchange coupling can be varied. OK. Now let's see. Uh, uh, come to this uh, uh, Paulis in blockade region and we try to uh, zoom in this region. Here is uh, some details of the uh, operation scheme. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, this is uh, some uh, the, uh, uh, switch, the direction is switched. Here we have a 0, 2 state, 1, 1 state. Uh, uh, this is a two electron pot, uh, diagram, energy diagram as a function of the tuning. Here is the, uh, the point of the so called resonance between the two singlet states, singlet 0, 2, and singlet 1, 1. This is located the, around here. And when you are here, near the, uh, sorry, this dashed line in blue indicates a spin triplet state. The exchange energy is equivalent to the difference between this triplet and this singlet. This small difference is equivalent to the exchange energy. When you approach the resonance region due to the repulsive behavior between two singlet states, the exchange energy is increased. But when you are away from this resonance point, exchange energy is decreased down to zero, more, more or less zero. And then what is done is to switch the condition <coughs> between this a uh, 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 region of nearly zero uh, J and the, this region of a large J. At this uh, point C, we apply, we can perform the swap operation. At this B stage, when the two dots are decoupled, we apply the microwave to rotate uh, the left spin. So this is the operation scheme, we initially prepare spin up-up states or for both spins. And then half eye rotation for the drive half eye rotation for the left to spin to make the hard mount states. And then swap operation is done to swap the two spin states. And then again we apply the half eye rotation. The final result when we have a swap, is converted to the combination of T plus, T minus, and C to C. And there is a, actually no charge state difference between the up up and T plus and T minus. This change cannot be detected. What we can detect is only the, the component of the singlet set. So then, uh, we can, if uh, we have a no swap, uh, uh, this triplet is converted just uh, so up up is converted just up up. So only when we have a swap operation, we can find the singlet the state. Okay. Then the finding probability of a singlet state after the swap and the two rotations as a function of the uh, uh, operation time of exchange coupling, the initially. Uh, zero signal, but after swap we have a maximum signal. And then as a function of operation time for exchange coupling, the signal of finding probability of signal <coughs> should be oscillated. Here is an experimental data uh, of that the uh, signal of detecting the finding probability of the singlet state as a function of the operation time of the exchange coupling. So we see these um, uh, oscillations indicating the complete swap rate. And then we change the exchange coupling by changing the uh, tonal coupling in the left panel and also by changing the detuning. As the, uh, uh, we decrease the exchange energy by tuning the detuning, 
the uh, period of oscillation becomes uh, larger and larger, indicating that the uh, swap time is extended gradually. Now, the visibility of this uh, uh, oscillation is uh, more or less uh, limited by two factors. One is the uh, dephasing during the uh, rotation and the swap. And also the mismatch of the uh, same energy between two spins, which occurs only uh, when the swap gate is going on. This is the, the, the numerical simulation by, done by Graph and uh, showing the finding probability of a singlet state after swap and the spin rotation. Uh, if we assume just the uh, mismatch of the uh, Zeman energy between two spins, but the no uh, Rabi dumping, the, uh, we can expect the uh, visibility of 100%. But if we include the Rabi dumping or the phasing, so the, uh, the visibility will be reduced down to 20%. The 20% is exactly the value we observed in this uh, experimental data. Here is a, a, a plot of the swap time obtained in the experiment as a function of the uh, center gate, which works to tune the tunnel coupling between the two dots. And this is the case when we tune the exchange coupling as a function of interval of the tune. In any case, the uh, swap time can range between the 10 and the, in this case, 15. In this case, is 10 and 25 nanoseconds. <coughs> the tuning of the tuning is very efficient. We expect that the swap time can be reduced down to nanosecond in principle. Okay. Now I come to the, uh, uh, the final part for discussion of the dephasing and the coherence problem. Okay, to uh, uh, derive the, the phasing time T to star, the Ramsey free induction decay experiment is very well known. The technique is uh, very popular, maybe I do not have to explain at all. This is actually the Ramsey data. And this Ramsey data will be analyzed well by assuming the T2 star of a 110 nanosecond. And this is uh, some kind of contrast of the Ramsey data is exactly uh, given by the, uh, the uh, contrast of the Rabi oscillations. And this is the uh, also the Ramsey data, but for the other spin. The data also shows the T to star of a 90 nanoseconds. So in any case, the uh, uh, T to star is on the order of 100 nanoseconds, which is uh, uh, more or less five, five times longer than the reports uh, by other groups. The, uh, we, we are not pretty sure about what's the reason, and it's still under uh, analysis. Here is a uh, experimental data showing the spin echo. And to derive the T2 uh, time by compensating for the, the inhomogeneous broad. And the data quality is not super good. But just by analyzing as a, with a, a T2 echo time as a parameter, we could derive the echo time of a 3.4 microsecond at one tesla, and the uh, uh, reduced down to 1.8 microsecond at the higher magnetic field. This uh, magnetic field dependency is not uh, very clearly understood, but this uh, time scale is also uh, three times longer than the, the previous reports. Okay. So the T2 star origin is uh, believed to be due to the, uh, uh, the fluctuation of the nuclear spin bars. This uh, effect will be uh, uh, discussed in detail by the Professor Ross in this uh, next talk. Then I do not have to discuss more. But uh, very briefly, uh, 
if there is a uh, fluctuation of the nucleus in the bus along this z-axis, the fluctuation is very, very tiny, expected to be 0.1% or as compared to the externally applied magnetic field. This percentage is very tiny, but still can fluctuate the uh, Zeeman energy or lama precession frequency. So this can fluctuate the uh, e uh, electron spin resonance conditions and gives rise to the uh, time dependent or inhomogeneous broadening of resonance mix. This is believed to the case for uh, the, uh, the T2 star we observed. And the expected the value would be, I think, uh, the expected value would be uh, 10 to 30 nanosecond. Uh, which is comparable but still is smaller than the body we uh, observed. Okay, now I come to my summary. It's a bit too early. But, okay. uh, we use the micromagnet technique to realize two spin qubits with a double quantum dot and evaluate uh, T2 star and T2 echo time. Uh, the, we are now making effort to extend the technique to make it 3 to 5 qubits and raise the rabbit frequency exceeding 50 megahertz, which is well uh, uh, faster than the uh, one of the start line. And then we also control the spin exchange coupling to realize a swap and square of swap gates with, together with spin rotation as a necessary step for implementing a control knob gates. And the control knob gate is not yet done, but we are interested in making a control knob gate with improved fidelity. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.